So guys, what does it take to break uh, a two hour, 30 minute marathon? I've been asked this uh, several times and can only tell you that I've done it only twice in my career. It's an extremely difficult uh, time goal, time barrier to break. Uh, you're really going to have to have your, your head on straight if you're going to go after a sub 230 marathon. Um, I definitely believe that you have to have, you do have to have some talent in regards to breaking this specific time barrier. Um, it's one thing to break four hours, it's another to break three hours, but it's a whole other ball game to get under two hours and 30 minutes. I mean, you're talking five minutes and 43 seconds per mile or three minutes and 33 seconds per kilometer. And, you know, it's, it's not just, it's not just difficult to hold that pace for, you know, three to six miles for a 5k or 10k pace, but to sustain that over a 26.2 mile 42.2 kilometer uh, race distance, you really have to spend a great deal of your time, uh, you know, spending more of your time around between 440 mile pace and five minute pace. You know, usually uh, when when I was trained to get under 222, which is basically still under 230, a little bit quicker, but the main types of workouts I was always focused on is, okay, so for me, it was 525. For somebody that's trying to break 230, it's it's 543. So you've got to spend more time training well below that 543 mile pace because you want to get to a point where you're, you know, that race pace feels more in control and more uh, easy, easier, I should say. 543 pace is not easy regardless. But, um, you know, I, I always emphasize, you know, speeding up your long runs and and not and doing it over a gradual period of time you can't just um you know you can't just start doing a, a 20 miler with 10 miles of that distance at five minutes and 43 second pace or, or 555 pace and you know a few seconds slower than than race pace you know some of the things that i was doing differently um when i was a 243 marathoner trying to get under 222 was the biggest change that I made was I started doing my long runs at 160 beats per minute. I was wearing a heart rate monitor. Um, at that time, that was about 85% of my maximum heart rate. So, you know, a good way to find your maximum heart rate is basically subtracting your age from 220. So, you know, when I, when I broke 220, I was 31 years old and, you know, now I'm 43. So it's been a few years. Um, you know, but you know, that's the bottom line. When you're trying to break a 230 marathon, you, you're going to have to do more than just, uh, you know, you, you got to have more than just an interest to break this, this type of barrier. You're going to have to be white hot, razor sharp focused to get under two hours and 30 minutes. And you have to have the capability to do it. You know, it, it took me really from 1992 to 2007 to, to be able to break uh, the 230 barrier. You know, I, I've only broken it twice. I ran under 220 once, and I broke 230 twice. So, you know, in in the you know, I started running marathons in 2002 up until 2013 was my last marathon uh, where I ran a 232. So from 2002 to 2013, I only broke 230 twice. So I can tell you just from my own background and experience how difficult that time is. Um, you know, even, even a half marathon in one fifteen flat, you've really got to be in really good shape to be able to do that. But to do it twice with no breaks, um, is going to obviously spend, you, you've got to spend more time, um, you know, doing mile repeats. Uh, I would, I would suggest doing mile repeats between 440 and 455 per rep, uh, doing six. And, and obviously this is when you're fit. You don't want to you know none of us, not myself or anybody else can just jump into these workouts and start doing those types of workouts. You have to have first a very strong, um, base mileage. You know, you have to have your mileage put down first. You have to be fit and then gradually get to a point where you're running, you know, your mile repeats at that type of speeds, uh, you know, doing repeat two miles between, um, you know, five flat pace and five fifteen pace. That way, you're still spending time, um, you know, a solid ten to eleven minutes, you know, in, in change or whatever, well below that five forty three mile pace. That's really the key. Uh, it's never going to feel easy, um, you know. But doing doing your tempo runs, um, you know, between a hundred. If you're wearing a heart rate monitor, usually between one hundred sixty five beats a minute to one hundred seventy four beats per minute. That anaerobic threshold, that point where uh, we're at that specific heart rate zone 
that's the point where we race at. So you've got to teach your body to get accustomed to running at that pace and, but for a longer period of time. And you have to be patient because, you know, when you're first starting out, doing a two mile tempo run uh, will be difficult. And the thought of doing, you know, a, a 10 to 14 mile tempo at that same effort is going to be, is going to overwhelm you at first. So really be patient with yourself regarding that. You know, to break a 2.30 marathon, uh, it's uh, it's going to take a great deal of patience on your part uh, because, you know, you got to understand that there's only so many, there's only a small percentage of people that break three hours, you know, each year around the world. Uh, when you look at the overall population, all the people around the world that are running marathons, very, very few people do that. But to break a two-hour and 30-minute marathon, uh, you have to have a uh, you do have to have a level of talent. I don't think that, uh, but your work ethic has got to be through the roof to get under two hours and 30 minutes. You, I've known so many athletes that have, um, that have faster times than I had on the track, uh, that were faster than me on the roads at, at distances from the 5k all the way up to the half marathon, even that didn't break 2:30. Um, you know, again, it's, it's not a 5k, it's not a 10k, it's not a half marathon. It's, you're doubling the distance. So a lot more can, uh, go wrong in that over that period of time, uh, but training yourself to clear lactic acid faster than it's building up is the key. It's you've got to improve your lactate tolerance, and the only way to do that is by training well under five minute mile pace. Getting you know, and not just not just in the four forties. You can if you're training under five forty three. Say you're running at five twenty pace, you're you're getting that physiological boost, and uh, you're going to teach your body to be able to sustain that pace over a longer period of time because you've trained much faster than you're trying to race at. Of course, I mean, none of us can spend, um, you know, much time racing or training at a minute to a minute and a half faster than our race pace. You know, a lot of times I would be doing, um, you know, I'd be doing repeat 200s, 300s, 400s, 600s, under four minute mile pace on the track. Now, granted, I can't do four minute mile pace for, for a mile or, uh, Barely, you know, my fastest 200 or my fastest 800 ever in high school was too flat. It was too flat point oh two. Um, so I know I can hold four minute mile pace for a half a mile, uh, but you know, even me, I I don't have that type of leg speed. But you can, you have to to be able to to sustain a, a 2:30 marathon pace for 26.2 miles. You have got to work on the speed. You have to build your mileage. You know, I, if you're getting to a point where you're trying, you're at that point where you want to break a 2:30 marathon, you have got to be doing consistent mileage weeks of anywhere from 70 miles a week to 100, 100 plus miles a week. But again, don't get so caught up in volume. Focus more on the quality. What's the percentage of your weekly volume that you're spending at near or far below 543 mile pace? That is the key. And you also have to focus in on all the other variables that go into a sub 230 marathon, uh, which is uh, backing off on those easy days. You should be absolutely jogging. I, I mean, I on my easy days, I, I couldn't have cared less if I was running 10-minute mile pace or 12-minute mile pace. It didn't matter, man. I was jogging. Some of the best marathoners I've ever trained with uh, from Kenya and Europe and other parts of the, uh, par other parts of the world uh, would literally jog on their easy days to the point where it was so slow, you know, but they taught me, they taught me the importance of recovery, you know, because our hard days were so difficult. You know, there were, we would be doing, you know, really hard, um, fart like workouts, like one hour of one minute hard, one minute easy, one minute hard, one minute easy, you know, and our hard efforts were, you know, anywhere from 430 mile pace to five minute pace. And then our easy sections, you know, our easy minute was like 630 mile pace. So there was never much of a break. And, and a lot of the top athletes that I, um, specific, a lot of the top marathoners that I trained with. I couldn't even keep up with. There was a, you know, I was, I trained with uh, Gilbert Ruto. He was from Kenya. He was a 210 marathoner. And I remember this was, I was, I was in college at the time, but I tried to go, his, his workout was an hour of one minute hard, one minute easy. It was that exact workout. And I remember him breaking me at 40 minutes. Um, I, you know, I wasn't, I was a little bit younger at that time, but I was trying to get to the next level. Um, you know, at that point in, in college, my best uh, half marathon was 113. I ran 113.32 in my debut, and uh, so I was not at that strength level. But that's another thing. You, you've got to be always thinking long term. Don't think, you know, short term in regards to this because with a 230 marathon, 
Um, if you're watching this video and you're interested in doing something like this, I would hope that you're somewhere under three hours already. Um, you know, either 259 or you're getting down in the 230s. Um, you know, I have friends right now that are trying to break this this barrier, and I know how difficult it is. I know what it takes. Um, you've you've got to have a very very high um, fitness level to do it, but you've you've got to be have trained uh, your aerobic capacity, which you know that's basically your sprinting. That's like at your maximum uh, effort. It's the point where there's so much lactic acid that's building up, you can't clear it. And that's why we can only spend so much time, you know, training, doing repeat intervals on the track, at, you know, four minute mile pace or, you know, four to five minute mile pace if we're training for a, a sub 230 marathon. So that's really the key. I want you to just, uh, you know, and, and as I talk about this, this specific uh, topic, I'm making a, a new course right now. It's going to be called the sub 230 marathon mastermind course. And I'm going to be covering what I feel is the exact steps you need to take in order to break uh, two hours and 30 minutes and get to a point where you can sustain 543 mile pace or 333 per kilometer over the entire distance. You know, again, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you were on pace for 17 or 18 miles of the marathon, you know, and the bottom line up front is where were you at at the finish line? What time did you come across at? You know, if you're at 233 or 236, 245, you know, you've got the ability to do it, but it's going to take a different plan. It's going to take uh, a different strategy. And a lot of some of the concepts that I teach are not very, uh, are very unorthodox. Like some of the, like, for example, uh, one of the biggest reasons I was able to go from 243 to 219 was I would do, I would obviously increase the, the pace of my long runs. But I was also, like I said, I was always focusing on recovery too. I would jog on my recovery days where it was just a complete, um, you know, just really relaxed, really easy. But on my long runs, I would do much faster efforts, you know, but right in the middle, like of a 20 mile run, I would do like at mile four, eight, 12 and 16, I would drop a 450 mile in the middle of the, in the middle of the long run and then get back into you know, easy recovery for about four miles, then do six miles at 160 heart rate, which again at that time was about 85% of my maximum heart rate. So it's much more high quality. And then the following week, I would jog my long run. It just real relaxed, you know. So again, it's alternating one harder uh, long run with a very easy recovery long run the following week because you can't continue to push the body and expect, you know, results. It, it, it doesn't matter what what type of athlete you are, or how fast you are. If you're not paying attention to those recovery days, uh, you, you know you're not going to get the uh, the biggest return on investment that you're seeking. You know in regards to this, you know a sub two thirty marathon. Like I said, it's extremely fast. It's, it's um, you know you. I'm not saying you have to live like a monk in order to to break this time barrier, but you have got to have your head on straight. You've got to be focused. You've got to be hungry. You've got to be determined and 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 driven in order to do it. You know, all the athletes that I've known over the years that, that are 229, 59 or faster for this distance, um, have a white hot focus. I mean, they are razor sharp, uh, driven toward doing this. And I, and all the athletes that I've known over the years that, um, you know, are in that 230 to 250 range, you know, have this as their goal. It's one of their, it's one of their, um, you know, you know, it's what drives them. They want to get to a point where they're under 230. You know, a friend of mine actually just, uh, uh, you know, he PR'd in the 10 mile and ran a, a 231.05 uh, in Alabama just a few weeks ago. You know, and he's, four, and he's 42 years old. I mean, he ran a great race, uh, won the Masters division as well. You know, and this guy's highly consistent, uh, very focused, and has been trying for years to get under that barrier. And he got really, really close. So I expect him to get under. Uh, two hours and 30 minutes because he definitely has the the mindset and the drive to do it but even him i mean he's putting in consistent weeks of 80 to 100 plus miles a week um you know and, and again it you don't want to get so caught up in okay well i gotta run this specific amount of mileage to get it but to get to under 230 you do have to be very very strong endurance wise and those high mileage weeks over you know a months you know over a 12 to 16 week period is going to get you to a point where you're so, you know, strong and so mentally, you know, focused and driven to do it. Um, 
that it's going to get you to, you know, it's going to set you up for success in regards to doing that. You know, I'm a big believer in a 10 day taper rather than a three week taper. I think once, you know, and it, and like I said, it's, I've tried the three week taper and it always made me feel lethargic. Whereas a 10 day taper, you know, you, you continue to remind your body what you're, what you're asking it to do. And then during those last 10 days, you really, you know, significantly drop your, your volume. You know, you maintain, you maintain the intensity, but you drop your, you know, uh, you know, in terms of intervals, you do much smaller amounts of intervals and you've significantly dropped your volume. But usually 10 days out is where I always perform my best. I ran my fastest half marathon that way, uh, PR in the marathon that way as well. So yeah, I mean, these are just some of the things I'm thinking about. You know, I, this topic has been something that's, that I've been thinking about uh, as of late, just main, mainly because of the new course I'm building. Uh, but I know there's a lot of athletes that are out there and you may be one of them that are, you know, under three hours and you want to get to a point where, uh, you know, you you can break the two hour and 30 minute barrier. You can finally get in the two twenties and, and have that as your goal. So, um, I'll leave the link to the, um, to the course, uh, you can sign up and if it's something that interests you, uh, you can sign up there and you'll not be notified, uh, once the course has been launched, um, I'm guessing, Based on where I'm at right now, it'll probably be sometime in February that I'll launch it. So definitely read the description below this video. And if you haven't yet uh, subscribed to the channel, definitely click subscribe and then click on the bell icon. That way, anytime I make a new video, uh, you'll be notified of that. So hope this video has been helpful for you. Like I said, uh, you know, 230, a sub 230 marathon is a highly coveted, um, extremely aggressive, competitive time. And people that do it are obviously highly focused, but they also have to have that capability. You have to, you know, if you're in, if you're in the 250s and 240s and 230s, then there's no reason why you can't do it. But it's gonna be, it's gonna ask quite a bit out of you. I mean, you, you may not do it in a year. It may take you a few years to get to the point where you're finally fit enough to do it. Uh, but if you're training in a different way and you have some new knowledge and some new specific strategies. Uh, to lead you into your next build up, I think it's going to really speed up uh, your progress. And that's the goal of this course. You know, I know what I'm talking about. I've done it twice. I know how difficult it was and some of the things that I had to do uh, to change, uh, to get to a point where I was running that fast. Um, and a big part of it was mental. Uh, you know, we were real focused on the physical tra training aspect of uh, marathon training, but the, the mindset you have to have, you've got to, you know, you've got to, you've got to, want it. It cannot be just an interest. You've got to be fully committed to doing it. And, you know, it already tells me, you know, if you're on this channel, you're already hungry, you're already focused, you're already driven. Uh, you know, people that, that visit this channel aren't, um, you know, they're, they're here to learn. They want to do uh, bigger things in the sport. Either they want to lose weight, they want to run the first half marathon, first marathon, or they're trying to break a, you know, a time barrier like this. So uh, with that, I'll leave you uh, with that information. And like I said, I'll, I'll leave some information below this video and so you can get, uh, so you can sign up for the course if it's, uh, if you're interested and a little bit more information below as well, that'll help you in your training. So have a great afternoon, great morning, great evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll talk to you next time.